Um, can you also, Max, talk about this incredible roster of musical artists involved in this? Yeah, um, I was kind of like a kid in a candy store when it came to the soundtrack. Uh, we reached out to a lot of my favorite artists and I had already had a playlist um, prepared for the movie. A bunch of songs were already written into the script and um, I also had an amazing music supervisor, uh, Randy Poster, who has worked with Wes Anderson and Scorsese and Harmony Corinne and he was a great mentor in terms of I, I, I love music and I had a lot of songs I wanted to use and he really helped me figure out well you know which songs really help the telling of the story and art and, and add an emotional dimension to the story and not just our great music. Um, but we reached out to a lot of uh, artists and we got a bunch of unreleased tracks from them that we were able to use in, in great spots in the movie. And then um, there were also some really obscure songs that not a lot of people knew that, that I was really proud to be able to get into the film. And I think, you know, the, the most, the, the collaboration I'm probably most proud of in regards to the music is with uh, Pyramid, this young up and coming French DJ who's kind of the French real life version of Cole in a lot of ways. And, uh, he and I worked together over the course of the entire film on preparing the Cole song, the final song that Cole performs. And it was challenging to make a song out of all the sounds in Cole's life. And, um, but you know, we worked on it uh, for a long time and I think we really got it to a place where um, it, it, it paid off Cole's story. Yeah, that's good. And one last question I think all of you can um, answer. How does this movie speak to a generation and why will audiences connect with Cole and his friends? We hope that it speaks to a generation. I don't think like any of us want to like say what the messages are of this film, but certainly I think that this is a film that speaks to a post-recession generation that, you know, doesn't have the promise of college as a sort of backbone to success and um, there's a lot of non-traditional ways to find your path, um, a lot of that being with the new gadgets that we all carry around. Um, there's tons of, like you see in the commercial, the thing about, you know, the creator of Instagram, and I mean, I think DJing is a part of that movement and culture, so it's a coming-of-age story that's very specific to a certain time and place, and I mean, I think all of us, certainly I, experienced that, um, the things that Sophie and Cole do. Um, I think the big message is for me or to, to dig deep, um, you know, be prepared for fear, but, but every time you're afraid, it's just another opportunity to rise above. Um, uh, and really sort of listen to yourself, follow your heart, and that can take you in the right direction. Good. Yeah. Anything else to add? Um, I hope it resonates with people because, you know, it was, it was a personal story. Um, and, and there was a lot of my life that, that I put into it. Um, you know, Cole is striving to be uh, a DJ. I was striving for a long time, but making internet movies in my bedroom at the computer, it looks very similar. And then, you know, once after we wrote the script, we invited the actors in and they really colored in all the details with their own lives and their own experiences. So I think this is a, a real, personal film for all of us and I think we brought our lives into it and I think and I hope that when you do something like that uh, it will resonate with with a greater audience. Great. Awesome.